Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a multi track looper in Reaper. Now, the idea of a multi track looper is going to loop multiple parts using the same instrument on multiple tracks to create a performance with many different parts. It's kind of a fun way of creating a song or just messing around or noodling. Now, we could already do this with a plugin called Super 8 MIDI Controlled Looper. And I have another video where I show you how to use it. But in this video, we're going to do it a bit differently. But we're going to use multiple tracks with one track for each part. And we won't need a plugin. So I have a track right here set up for my guitar. I set up the input. For mono, and where my guitar is plugged into. Turn on input monitoring right here. Make sure it's turned on so we could hear our guitar through the track, and then we could put it into record. But instead of doing it that way, I'm going to use a different feature. If we right click the track, we can go down here to automatic record arm when track is selected. So if we choose this, the track goes into record when the track is selected. If it's not selected, it comes out, select it again, it goes back in. This will make it easier for taking each track in and out of record, as we're going to make multiple tracks during our performance. Next thing I want to do is go to my preferences. Under Options, Preferences, and I'm going to scroll down to Media Item Defaults. And I'm going to turn off Create Automatic Fade In and Fade Out for new items. This is going to create a fade in and a fade out every time we punch in. I don't really want that for this, so I'm going to turn it off. Then we'll go to the options menu and make sure we're using record mode normal. Then we'll go down here to new recording that overlaps existing media items and make sure it's still set to splits existing items and creates new takes. That's the default, but if you happen to switch it, Make sure you put it back to this mode. Then we'll go down here to our transport and turn on looping because we want to loop as we're recording. Then we'll set up that loop with a time selection. I'm going to go from bar three to bar five. And this is the area we're going to record. Of course, we can make this any size that we want. I'm going to start from bar two to give me a bit of counting. And then I'll start playing. At bar three. Now you'll notice if I make a mistake or I'm not ready, I can always get it on the next loop as it's going to loop record over and over again. And we're just going to save the last pass or the last pass that we like. Now, for the first example, I'm going to do this manually and show you what I'm doing step by step. But a little later, we're going to create a custom action. And we could do this a lot quicker with one keystroke. So I'm going to record my first guitar part by just simply going into record. And when I'm happy with it, I'm going to go out of record and go back to the previous take by selecting it. That's pretty good. Now we're going to record the next part. But before we do that, let's crop the active take. We'll get rid of all the other takes we don't need. So right click, go to take, and choose crop to active take. Now we just have the take that we like. Then I'll go to my track, right click, and duplicate it. Now it's going to duplicate it. So we're going to hear the audio twice, but we'll delete it very quickly. Now we still have the one take. Now we're going to record on this track and record the next part. Then we'll go out of record, select the previous take we just did, so it's active. Right click, 
and we'll crop to this active take. And once again, we'll duplicate it, delete it, go back into record, and record the next part. Come out of record, select the previous take, crop it, and we have three parts. Let's do one more, duplicate it, delete, go into record, and record the last part. Come out of record, choose this take, right click, crop it, and let's stop, and let's see what we have. Obviously it's not perfect because of my guitar playing, but I think you get the idea. We can very quickly create multiple parts right on top of each other with just a few clicks. But like I said earlier, we could do this a lot quicker with a custom action. So let's delete all this. Let's go to our action list right here, show action list. And we'll go down here to create a custom action. We'll go to our filter and search Transport record, and we'll choose this action here to go first. We'll drag it over, and what that's going to do is going to take us out of record. So if we're already recording on a track, it's going to punch out with this first action. The next action is going to switch our take to the previous take, which is what we did before by selecting it right here. Switch items to previous take, just drag it over, and that action is going to perform right after we punch out a record. Next, we're gonna to crop to the active take, right here, which is what we did before, after we chose the take. So we got rid of all the takes we're not using or keeping. Then we're gonna duplicate the track. Right here. The next action, we're gonna select all the items on that duplicated track, right over here. And then we're going to delete them all very quickly. So we'll choose to remove items. Right here, item, remove items. That's going to remove the duplicated items so we don't hear them twice. And then finally, we're going to punch back in to record. So we'll go back to transport record and drag this in at the end. So we're going to punch out. Switch to the previous take, which is played, crop to the active take to just keep the good one, then duplicate our track, select all items in the track, then remove them, then we're going to go back into record on that new track. We'll give it a name, multi-track looper, then we'll save it, and the custom action is right here. We'll assign it a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to use Control D but you can use any keyboard shortcut that you want. So I can do the same thing again, but all I have to do after I'm happy with my recording is hit that keystroke. While the track is selected, it's gonna perform all those actions in one step. So right away we can record the next part. So let's do it.
And just like that, we have five parts. So we can add to it later. We'll just redo it. We'll just have fun creating new parts. And it's a lot quicker using that custom action. So that's pretty much it. That's creating a multi track looper in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.